everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Randy and I make videos on entrepreneurship. And today I'm gonna be getting into something a little bit different. And that is an interview I recorded a few weeks ago of the co-founders of this company called Popple. A few announcements before I start. I did just get faded. Uh -huh. And also guys, I know I didn't post a video on Wednesday. I have been getting a lot of things on my plate lately. So I think I'm gonna take it back to only uploading on Saturdays, which I hope you guys can bear with me on that because I am taking summer classes and I also have business things to do. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So if you guys don't know what this company is, I actually did a review of their product in the last video. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check that out, link will be up here in the corners or down in the description below. But if you guys don't wanna watch that whole video, I'll give you guys a quick summary of what it is. It's basically an NFC tag that you can stick to anything, but it's actually meant to stick to the back of your phone. And what you do is just tap it to somebody else's phone and it's gonna make a link pop up on the top of their phone as a notification they just tap on that and then it'll show all the social media you have linked to your popple account if you guys want to go ahead and purchase yours i do have an affiliate link down in the description below which i would definitely appreciate it if you guys would use because that helps support the channel a lot and for doing that i'm going to give you guys a promo code that you guys can get 20 percent off with and that is using the code randy i came across the ad a few weeks ago on instagram and the product really interests me because i wanted something like this except it was in the shape of a credit card but it was really supposed to be a play off a business card however i never pulled the trigger on that one and when this one came around i felt like i had a more personal connection with it so i decided to look into it and i was thinking to myself like wow this is such a big idea like how does somebody even come up with this how does one execute this so i started to think to myself like who are the founders what do they do did they go to school what do they study how do they know how to do this and why did they come about it i had a lot of questions that needed to be answered and i figured that the answers wouldn't only benefit me but it would also benefit my viewers that are entrepreneurs because as an entrepreneur you're more than likely trying to do a million things and a lot of things interest you but you just don't know how to get started because that's basically the life of an entrepreneur Figure Figuring things out and then executing upon experiences. So I took matters into my own hands, did some research, found out who the co-founders were, I DM the company, and then I found the phone number of the other one, which might sound weird, but it was out there, so not trying to sound like I'm a stock or anything. I went ahead and contacted them and asked them if I could do an interview with them. And sure enough, they were more than happy to do so. And that's what the rest of this video is about. Basically, me interviewing them. And of course, we had to do it over Zoom call due to the circumstances going on right now. So we took the extra precautions. And with all that being said, guys, let's get into the actual interview. Interview. All right, so tell me about yourself, about both of you guys, such as like who you guys are, where you guys are from, what's your background, whether it's what school you went to or family background, or you guys on entrepreneurship background, you know? Yeah, so my name's Nick. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. I went to UCLA, graduated class of 2019. Me and Jason met each other in our fraternity at UCLA, became friends. We went to the gym like every day. We bench pressed every day. That's, it. That's how we became friends, became best friends. And then Couldn't we, even do a play at the beginning. I know. I was, <laughs> I was a small little boy. Yeah. <laughs> Jason was one year older than me. He graduated one year before me. And then this year we just moved into our apartment back in like June. And we were both getting real sick of our nine to five jobs. I had like, like five different jobs since graduating before starting Popple. And then we learned about this technology. Jason tells a story about that. It's a great story. We've been we starting a company, best friends, live together, roommates. It's, uh, it's a ride. It's a Yes. So like Nick said, yeah, I graduated two years ago. My name's Jason uh, and my background is in software engineering. So I was able to take our prototype, our idea and actually build it. And that's how we've gotten to this point so fast. So, you know, it's not all sunshine. It's been hard sometimes, you know, oh, we're working together on really big, you know, important decisions and we're also best friends. Sometimes hard to balance that, but I think we're doing a good job. Yeah. You guys have a business together, clearly. You guys want to tell me a little more about it? Yeah, absolutely. Our product called Popple. It's a little tag that you put on the back of your phone. And when you hold it up to someone else's phone, the best thing about this is they don't need an app or a Popple. You just hold it up to their phone, sends a push notification. That's sick. And it opens up my Popple profile, which has basically every single social media you can think of on there. So we're looking to replace the business card. We're looking to replace typing in usernames when you meet someone. We're looking to replace um, typing in someone's number incorrectly and just making sure that connection you meet and the connections you make are solidified. Yeah. Also, just reducing the friction is making things easier. True. 100%. Yeah. This is definitely going to be the new norm of like, hey, what's your number? Here you go, bro. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Nothing gets lost in translation. You've seen our TikTok, right? Of what's course. What's crazy is TikTok has been essential in our growth and our marketing and our brand awareness. You know, we posted this one TikTok early February of just us at 
our college gym with our friend Arev and she just popped us and it went to her TikTok. It shows our product, it shows it like advertises TikTok on TikTok. Yeah. And that video just went absolutely viral. It's sitting at like almost 80 million views now. That was the initial like, whoa, what is this product? And now our like target demographic turns out to be like 13 to 18 year old kids. When did you guys start? Everywhere from the beginning of the idea all the way to the launch date? We started in late 2019. We used to be Ripple. That was an, an old company name. We rebranded to Popple after we realized that Ripple, there's brand confusion. There's the cryptocurrency, which is billions of dollars. Oh, yeah. Not be good for SEO. It's kind of familiar. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So we decided to rebrand to Popple. We got the domain, four letter domain. And with that, we launched basically on TikTok, I'd say is like our official launch yeah. on, on like February 12th. Crazy. Uh, and in less than two months, we hit a million followers on TikTok. How did you guys start something like this? It seems like such a simple product, like something so little. I'm sure there's definitely a lot that goes into it. So how did this come about? So. I learned about the technology at a party in the Hollywood Hills. Once I learned about NFC, I spent weeks learning about it and researching it and looking into like what it is and how it works. We ordered some prototype tags to the house, got those delivered, and then had our first prototype was just taking me to my Instagram. So, you know, you'd pop it, it would just go to Instagram. Mm -hmm. There's no profiles or anything. Spent the next couple of months building the profile site, building up that side of it, um, the whole software end. We were lucky enough to have my dad who He's very entrepreneurial, he's a, up at UC Berkeley. He was able to help fund us at the beginning, which oh. helped a lot, uh, and help us get connections with legal and other necessary things for a company. Yeah, it's huge. Then, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we met Jeremy, who is our most active advisor, who came in and also added a lot of value early on. And that's really helped us, helped us get to this point so fast. That's awesome, dude. Moving on to the next question. Time what made you me. guys decide to start this business? Out of all the business ventures you can do, especially with NFC, what made you want to choose basically an easy route for people to communicate? So me and Jason are both really social guys. You know, we'd, we'd go out, we like go to bars, go to parties a lot and always try to meet as many people as we could. Exchange contact information, follow people on Instagram, build our network, right? And then when he found out about this business card, this technology where you could just tap to a phone and push your contact info, we're like, I was like, whoa, let's make this a business because it fits with who we are. We're social people. We are super connectors. And we made a product that allows us to do that a hundred times better. And it's like the social route. It's a great social media product because it's for sharing your social media. It's about connecting people. It's like, it's, it's so simple yet so impactful and like revolutionary in the terms of connecting with people. People are literally just like, like, how does that work? And they're, they're actually just, they have no idea. So what marketing strategies do you use and why did you decide to use those? Well, so at this point, TikTok is our main marketing, I'd say, platform. Uh, and we did not expect that to happen. We kind of, <laughs> the way we approached TikTok was like, let's just start putting some videos up and we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get a couple buys from the, from TikTok and then get most of them from Instagram. And then that video blew up and that was like our fourth video. So that was like pretty early on. And we were like, okay, that changed the landscape for us. We should yeah. definitely prioritize TikTok now over Instagram. Yeah. And it is way better. You know, on TikTok content is king, which mm -hmm. is how it should be. On Instagram, your followers is king. So. You're yeah. only as big as your followers. On TikTok, you're as big as your content. If you have good content, you can blow up. Yeah, it's super easy on TikTok, you know. Videos are shared out to so many people, especially if it's different. And when it goes viral, it, there's no stopping it, especially on TikTok. True. The amount of people exactly. that still have to go onto the platform, I think there's only like half a million users. Within the next two, three years, it's like three to five billion people entering the internet. So it's only gonna grow more. faster than Instagram right now. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But obviously- and Everyone's know. so bored. Yeah. That's actually one of my questions I'm going to ask you guys later on, something to do with the pandemic. I see. But um, I might as well ask you guys now, like how do you guys see this pandemic affecting you guys in a positive or negative way? Um, obviously it's it's negative for everybody. But what what's interesting is one of our key metrics that we track is pop count, which is the number of times someone popples someone else. And on your profile, you can see your pop count and then we can track the total pop count. Mm -hmm. And we're noticing the numbers aren't, they're not getting smaller. Like we're staying at a consistent number every day. People are still using their popple. It's like, who are they popling? They're probably their <laughs> parents, probably their friends, probably, probably. their siblings. But it's or like, themselves or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, I mean, I, I'm sure the numbers would be way higher if there wasn't a pandemic and people were like socializing and meeting people. And I'm, I'm sure once, you know, we can start going outside again and meeting people, the numbers will spike. 
skyrocket. Yeah, but we're getting like consistent sales because everyone's seen our product on social media, which is great. Despite yeah. the pandemic, it's like e-commerce is still booming, to be honest. That, that, I think it's in a, that's what I was saying. I thought it would, yeah, yeah, it hurts right now. This pandemic is hurting a lot of businesses, but as far as e-commerce, everybody's at home online. Everything's on, on the internet. So I feel like exactly. everything on the internet is actually going to boom now more than before, you know? It's true. And we uh, we work from home anyway, so the fact that we're quarantined, we're you know we're able to just get a lot of done and be really productive just because we're here anyway. Where do you guys see yourself in the future? What's your next goal? Ideally, like our goal is to have popples on millions of people's phones. We want millions of popples sold, um, like pop sockets. You know, that everyone, so you know, a bunch of yeah. people have a pop socket. We want that to be. You have a pop socket, right? Popple. I saw one on your phone. Oh, it's actually it's a ring. It's a oh, ring. Oh, got it, got it. It's also a magnet, so I can put it on my phone. On my phone. Nice. But yeah, we wanna we're trying to capitalize on that back of the phone real estate, which is super valuable. Great for advertising as well. We've yeah. had multiple B two B orders where like a company orders in bulk, and we make them custom popples, and then all their employees have them on the back of their phone with their logo. I had a lot of questions written down, but as I was asking you guys, you guys basically just kept the ball rolling and answered them throughout the video. Okay. My last question, to you guys, is what advice would you guys give to entrepreneurs? That's a good question. Let's see. I have a lot of. I would say, how should I start it? Hey, spill the beans, man. <laughs> they want to know. So I, I was full time at Boeing. Do you know Boeing? The airplane company? Airplane company, yeah. So I was full time there. From the first couple weeks that I was there, I, I remember telling myself, you know what? This is not a long term thing for me. I was not happy. I mean, you know, I learned a lot and it was really like I was working with very smart people and it was a great experience. But if you know that you're not like meant for a nine to five and you want to be your own boss and have your own business, mm -hmm. you just got to like find something that you're passionate about, uh, do a small sample set to see if people like it, and then just do it. I mean, I know it's I know it's played out, and I don't want to be that guy that's it just like, cliche, it itself, but it's just like, but I know gotta, what you're saying, 100%. You just gotta start, like, start making a to-do list, uh, break it up into small chunks, and then, you know, don't quit your job until you're at a point where, you're, where you can pay yourself, but mm -hmm. slowly, you know, here's full, full-time, here's full uh, entrepreneurship, slowly go over there. It doesn't have to be one, two, just like slowly, you know? So start building your empire, start like separating into small tasks and get it done. Yeah. I think a lot of people want to be an entrepreneur, but don't like want to do the work it takes to get there. They want that overnight success, which is like a myth. Yeah, you, you nailed it there, bro. Yeah. That's we're, definitely we're the, true. I'd say we're the closest with the TikTok blowing up overnight. But I think <laughs> even with that, it's like we, we weren't an established company yet, you know? We're, mm -hmm. You still had to work really hard to get there. Yeah, you had a lot of back end work to do, definitely, before definitely. you can even put the product on TikTok in front of people's faces. Because imagine if you guys just show the prototype and then you guys can't can't fulfill any sales. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly, exactly. That would definitely hurt. I think that hurts companies initially. And that's why, I mean, I don't know if you guys seen in Shark Tank, but um, you hear companies, they get hurt on the, initially because they don't have the funding or they don't have, um, they can't fulfill the sales, you know? So that's why they go yep. for funding. Yep. Pretty crazy. Yeah. We've had some growing pains there, but we're actually, we're doing quite well now. We're working with some distributors and it's helping us scale to the next level. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, so that's, that's basically it. I mean, thank you guys. I'm, I'm gonna end the recording here, but we're still gonna discuss things after I basically end of the All recording. Right. Thank you, Randy. It's been a pleasure, man. That's awesome. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Now, before I close out the end of the video, I do wanna give a big shout out and a big thank you to Jason and Nick over at Popple. Thank you guys for providing the insight, not only to me, but for my viewers as well, which you guys are watching, of course. I really hope it helps my viewers out a lot. And hopefully you learn something from this and you're taking away from it. And hopefully you execute in what you wanna do. Anyways, with all that being said, guys, don't forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below. Like I said earlier in the video, it will help support the channel and use the code Randy for 20% off your purchase. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And also don't forget to subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. With all that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video.